and it reads, These words spake Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, thou thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with them before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have given that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And now and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may they that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept them, and none of them is lost, but the son of prediction that the scripture must might be fulfilled. Filled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them of the world, but shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even I am as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these men, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may be that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glorify which thou gavest me, and I given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that they the world may and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me thank you gabriel very very good good job bless the lord thank you lord so he prayed not that we would be taken out of the world but that he may be seen through us in this world, amen, and that he keeps us, hallelujah, while we are yet in this world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise today. We thank you, Lord, for being our advocate. Thank you, Lord, our intercessor. Hallelujah. We give you praise today, God. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the worship team to come at this time and lead us into our worship service. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
love you, ain't no. Let us rejoice. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad oh, 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 this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in oh, it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter, I will enter. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. For oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter, I will enter in his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Yes. I will enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, 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 this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come into this house to magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on him, and worship him. Worship him. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Have your way. Concentrate. Concentrate. 
Obey and serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, striving always to fulfill our purpose, making disciples of all men for the advancing of the kingdom of God on earth under the direction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you so much. I just want to greet everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. It's good for us to be here in the house of the Lord. And for the better part of it, we are in his presence. Amen. So I thank God. And for those who view us today, we, are, we appreciate you. Always come on and be a part of us. We thank the Lord for you. Today is Children's Sunday. Amen. Although the adults... Uh, uh, maybe the kids, the children don't run the adults today. We don't have a regular house of folks we normally have. But we are not watching the crowd today. Because something good is about to happen. Amen. So I just want to say thanks to the moderator today. Amen. Had done an excellent job. And when you moderate, remember, no, it has to be with obedience to what the Lord wants you to do when you're moderating a service. Amen. So I thank the Lord for the young people, youth slash children today. We give God thanks for them today. And I was so blessed by the, the, the song by Casey and my friend. <laughs> God bless, God bless you. They are such a, a blessing to the ministries, not just youth and children. The entire ministry of the church. Amen. Because when they come to render an item, it's always a tremendous blessing. And the encouragement is to um, empower them. Amen. For ministry. Praise the Lord. And the, the, the parent have the responsibility to do that. Um, their pastor has a responsibility to also do that. Amen. So I thank the Lord for their openness and always be a blessing. And what I notice, each time they are getting better and better. God is up to something. Amen. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord. Today, I, we just want to uh, pray for them, pray for those who are not well, um, for those who you have not seen for a little bit, a while, pray them up. Amen. Keep the brother Andre and family in your prayers as they journey back uh, just about now, maybe earlier this morning. We just want to pray them up and let the Lord lead them. Amen. Are we blessed today, church? All right. And I know we are here to get some more stuff, some more feeding. Amen. We need more. So today we have with us our youth leader. Amen. Sister Shirley will come and share with us what the Lord have laid on our heart today. And as I always say, um, if you preach along with her, you'll be out of here quick as you think. Amen. She's not a long eater. She gets to the point and, you know, preach, pray, and then we go home and, and have a good time. Amen. So please keep her in your prayers. 
And thanks for all the different ministries in this local church. Amen. We give God thanks. And always for my family, my wife and my, my daughter, my children on a whole. You may not know, but they supported me in my ministry in this local church. And I thank the Lord for them. Amen. This church is a church that prays. And this church is a church that loves. Amen. And this church is a church that is on its way to immense growth. So all the diversities and all the different ministries that are here, we are just ready to say, come. We were waiting on you. Stay in your ministry. Build the ministry. Fortify it. Amen. And stand where God put you to stand. Don't run ahead of yourself. Humble yourself. And let the will of the Lord done in your life. Amen. Stand with me as we pray this prayer at this time. Bless his name. Our Father, our great God, you who knows the thought and the intent of man, oh Lord, we are grateful for this time. We are thankful for today. Lord, we can join together and said it was good for us to be here. Oh God, we have felt your presence here this morning. And Lord, your servant is about to come to share from what you have given her. Lord, we are asked, you know, that it will not fall on stony places, my God, but the word will centralize into the heart of somebody. It will build us. It will strengthen us, my God, that we can make the journey a success. We are asking you now, dear Father, to bless your daughter. Speak through her. Grant the anointing. Give inspiration. Mighty God, we come against any other spirit that is not of God. Lord, the church is in agreement. Oh, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus and we bind up. Hallelujah to God. Release your power and your daughter that it will not be ordinary. But the word will go forth with precision and accuracy. In the name of Jesus, let it touch hearts and mind. Mighty God, let someone Cry out and said, I am healed. I am delivered by the hand of Almighty God. Father, hear us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, receive our youth leader, director, Sister Shirley, as she come to share with us. Stay with her. Don't fall asleep. Preach along with her, say your amen, and everything, encourage her, encourage her. Matter of fact, we haven't heard her for a little bit of a while, so it's good for us to hear her now, amen. Bless the Lord, you may be seated, praise God, to God be the glory, great and awesome thing. I must admit <laughs> that I try to run away from this spot every time. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. But I thank the Lord for 
given me the opportunity to stand before you today. I know it's nothing in me. I don't even have the desire, to be honest. But wherever the Lord leads, I submit because I love him. Because he gave his life for me. And everything in me, it's because of him. Every good and perfect gift that is in me came from above. And you can join with me and say the same thing. That it is because of who he is and what he has done. And because he paid the ultimate price. And because of that, today we have hope. And because of that, today we stand. We stand in that authority today. Um, Sister Linda, I want to thank you for following the leading of the Holy Spirit this morning. Because sometimes we forget the authority that we have in Jesus. And we allow the enemy to come in, into our homes and wreak havoc. And for a minute, sometimes we try to hide but the Lord is saying not to us today, we have the authority to Jesus Christ. It's nothing of ourselves, nothing that we have. But it's who we have that lives on the inside of us. And because he lives in us, we are victorious. Bless the Lord. So today, I just want to greet our pastor and First Lady, the entire ministers and membership of this local church, for those of you who are joining us online, you've been faithful, watching us, we, I greet you today in no other name but the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord today for what he has done and for what he has laid upon my heart today. I pray it will be a blessing to your souls. I believe that, not I believe, but the word of the Lord says that when his word goes out, it will not return void. It must accomplish that it, what it is sent out to do. So I submit to the word of the Lord today and I give him glory. So in line with our theme today, I'm just going to speak with you for a few minutes on Jesus, our mediator and intercessor. And knowing the program, I had intercessor first and then mediator, but I switched it around because we, the Lord had to stand in the gap for us first, right? And then... He interceded for us. Bless the Lord. And we give the Lord thanks today. So if we should look at the two words, intercessor and mediator, these definitions are quite similar. They're, they, they're intertwined and they support each other. Biblical definition for intercessor, it says, is someone who prays, petition, to God in favor of another. It says a mediator is a go-between who acts as a link between two opposing parties, right? Bringing about peace and bringing about reconciliation. Bless the Lord. So we're going to look at Jesus being our mediator. And the question I will ask you today, I will ask the young people today, because we had a conversation yesterday on, um, on our youth meeting, and I just went, we just went through the theme with them. And I will ask the question today. As human beings, why do we need a mediator? Why do we need Jesus to be our mediator? Based on the scripture in Genesis, after the fall of Adam, the 
because he disobeyed God. Mankind fell out of relationship because of the sin of one man. And Romans 15 and 19 says, and this is from the New King, New King James Version, it says, for by one's, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. And if we look at the definition, and we will say, what are the two opposing parties? The two opposing parties was the human race, because we fell out of relationship with God through Adam's disobedience, and we are, because we are no longer in relationship with the Lord, we are at enmity. And Jesus came, and he stood in the gap for us. And he made peace with us through his death and resurrection. And we celebrate the Lord today. We give him thanks that he stood in the gap for us. Because he know we couldn't have done it for ourselves. And the word of the Lord says for in St. John 3 and 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he said, whosoever believeth that Jesus came and he died and rose, he said, you shall have everlasting life. So the Lord stood in the gap for the entire world, whether you believe it or not. And that doesn't change. But in order for you to come in, re in relationship with the Lord, you must believe that Jesus came. And you must ask him to come into your heart and be the Lord and master of your life. Then you can say with assurance that the Lord has reconciled me to my father. And now I am at peace with him again. No, my relationship is no longer scattered and unsure, but my relationship with him now is secure and sure. Bless the Lord. Now, if we look at the word intercessor, As I said before, that when an individual stands in the gap for someone else, you are an intercessor. So when Jesus came, that is exactly what he did. And we know that I'm going to go into the book of St. John, chapter 17, if you could go there with me. And I'm just going to go down a few verses. Um, it's a long um, chapter. But um, I just want to go down the verses just to see. All right. So we're looking into the um, chapter 17 of St. John. And this is the prayer of intercession that the Lord made for us. I don't know about you, but every time I read this, my soul rejoices because I know and we know that we are not in this alone so the word of the Lord when we and that's the importance of reading the word of the Lord because when we read the word of the Lord it brings life and hope in us so if we, we should do uh, just a quick background of if we should go back to I would say chapter 16 this is where Jesus was preparing for his death his, and his burial. And he had, he spoke to the disciples as, he, as they had the, the, the Passover um, supper. And he encouraged the, um, the disciples. He told them, he said, you know, you're going to experience tribulation. He said, I have to go away. But he said, I'll go away just for a little while, but I'll come back. And they didn't really understand what he was saying. 
because they, one of the disciples even said to him, Lord, you're speaking to us in parables. Speak to us straight. And he told them exactly. He said, I'm going to go. I'm going to die. And he said, I will, raise, I will rise again on the third day for your sins and for the entire sins of the world. And he, he, because he is Christ and God, he knows their thoughts and their hearts. And he knows that they were troubled. And he encouraged them. And he says, even in um, St. John 14, he encouraged them. Even back then, he encouraged them. He said, be not troubled. He said, I am going to go away. But he said, I'm going to go away. And I will come again. But he said, I have to go. Because the Holy Spirit have to come. And he is the one who will reveal the heart of God and who God is and who we are. And he says he will lead us and he will show us the Father. So back over in <laughs> chapter 17, the first, um, I believe John, as he wrote, and if we should look at the three Gospels, their accounts are different when it comes to the crucifixion. No, this is John's account because he was present. So he knows exactly what is going on. And he was, the, with the help of the Lord, he was able to write exactly how the Lord interceded for us. So the first five verses of the chapter... The Lord is interceding. He's speaking to the Lord about himself. And I will also say that this is one of the longest prayers that was recorded that Jesus prayed. And I know he prayed all the time because he was in communication with the Father all the time. But the Lord allowed John to pen this so that we can learn the principles of how Jesus prayed and how we should pray. So the first three verses, he prayed for himself. The first, no, the first five verses, I'm sorry. John chapter 17, 1 through 5. And if you will allow me, I am going to read it from the Amplified Version so that the children can understand, and even for some of you who don't really understand it, some of the words, I am just going to read it from there. Is that okay? I know the King James is my favorite, but let's do the Amplified for now. All right. So it says, when Jesus had spoken these things, he raised his eyes to heaven in prayer and said, Father, the hour has come. He says, glorify your son, that your son may glorify, glorify you. Just as you have given him power and authority over all mankind. Now glorify him, so that he may give eternal life to all who have given, you have given him to be his permanently and forever. Now this is eternal life, that we may know you, the only true, supreme, sovereign God, and in the same manner know Jesus as the Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you down here on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself. And with the glory and majesty I had before the world existed. So here we are seeing that the word says that Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. Here he's praying he didn't go to the cross yet. He was about to go. But because it is already done in God, because he already did it already, because he already surrendered already. Because he went, when he went into the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, if it's, if it's possible, 
Let this cup pass from me. But he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So in Jesus, he already went to the cross. And he had victory already. So now he's praying, right? And he's saying, glorify. Glorify me. And the glory that he's talking about is the road that he will walk. The road of crucifixion, where he took on the sins of the world. Every single sin. He took on in his own body. And he bore the shame for us. So that we don't have to stand before our father guilty. But we can stand before him in Jesus. Guiltless. Bless the Lord. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18 through 20. And it's just telling us how the Lord reconciled us. And this is pretty much what he said, what the Lord is saying, what the Lord is saying here about. The Father glorifying him. This is pretty much what he did for us. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20. And I'm going to read from the Amplified Version again. And it says, "But But all these things have from God, who reconciles us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable. To him and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So that by our example, right, the way we live according to Christ, we might bring others to know him. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not counting people's sins against them but canceling them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. That is restoration and favor with God. The word of the Lord says, be justified. We're justified by faith. And because we are justified, because we are, in, we're, made, we're made right, we are, we've moved from a position of sin to a position of righteousness. And he's saying that being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So as he interceded and he said, Father, glorify me. Glorify yourself. And he says to him, bless the Lord, your son, that your son may glorify you, just as you have given him power and authority over all mankind. Uh, Let me go down. And he says, okay, verse 4, he said, you have glorified, I have glorified you here. I walked on earth for three years in ministry. I taught in the temples. I I, I taught the disciples. I did miracles. I raised the dead. I healed the sick. He said, I did all this so that men will know that I am God, that I am your son and that you sent me. So verse 5 said, No, Father, glorify me together with yourself and with the glory and majesty that I had with you before the world existed. So the Lord is saying, okay, he says, Lord, I know in you it is already done. 
I did it already. I went to the cross already. Although he didn't physically go. He says, I went to, he's pretty much saying, I went to the cross already. And he says, glorify me. That with the glory and majesty that I had with you before the world existed. He said, I have not manifested your name, that is, and revealed your very, your very self, your real self, to the people whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me. And they have kept and obeyed your word. Now at last, they know with confident assurance that all you have given me is from you. It is really and truly yours. For the words which you gave me, I have given them. And they received and accepted them and truly understand with confident assurance that I came from you, from your presence, and they believed without any doubt that you sent me. He says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world. So right here, he, had, he just prayed for the disciples. And he says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you have given me. Because they belong to you, and all things are mine, are, are yours. All things that are mine are yours, and all things that are yours are mine and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, yet they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. He says, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, so that they may be one as we are. And he says, while I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them, protected them, that and not one of them was lost. The, the son of destruction, which is Judas, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. So here the Lord is saying, the Lord is praying for his disciples. And, the, and I love the way he, how he approached his father because he had a relationship with them. They were one. So he was able to approach the father this way and said, Lord, all that you have given me, all the disciples, the apostles that you have given me, he said, I have lost none. He said, I taught them. I revealed who you are to them. And he said, only the one the son of perdition, which is Judas. Verse 13, but now I'm coming to you and I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may experience my joy made full and complete and perfect within me, filling their hearts with my delight. I have given to them your word, which is the message you gave me, and the, word, the world has hated them because they are not of the world and do not belong to the world. But that you keep them and protect them from the evil one and that they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. And then he says, sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart for your purpose. Make them holy. Your word is truth, just as you commissioned and sent me into the world. I have commissioned and sent them, and here he's talking about believers, into the world for their sake. I sanctify myself to do your will. So he became obedient, right? He learned obedience. That's what the word says. I'm sorry. Even to the death of the cross. So that 
they also may be sanctified and dedicated, made holy in your truth. And he says, I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sakes only that I make this request. So he wasn't only praying for himself and the disciples, but he prayed for us also. Every single individual who will receive Christ, the, the Lord has already prayed for us. And it says, but also for all those who will ever believe and trust in me through their message, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. So that the world may believe without a doubt that you sent me. So the prayer of the Father for us, Everyone who will come to know the Lord. His prayer for us is that we be one. Just as how him, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. And the Lord is so good. Awesome. When he told the disciple that he had to go away. And he said he would send the comforter. The Lord knew, down to our time and beyond, that we, are going, that we would need a helper when we have to intercede on someone else's behalf. And if we go into the book of Romans, I love the scripture, real quick. Romans 8. We're going to be reading from the 26th through the 28th. Oops, okay. And the scripture says, in the same way the Spirit come to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. But the Spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf. With sighs and groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because the Spirit intercedes before God on the behalf of God's people in accordance to God's will. So the Lord has given unto us his Holy Spirit. That we can go before him. We can intercede for our country. We can intercede for our school systems. We can intercede for our families. We can intercede for our church family. We can intercede for the world. We can intercede for those in the healthcare systems. We can intercede for nation, for on behalf of nations because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. I must confess, <laughs> as I prepared this week, and every time I'm asked to speak, I do an internal check. And I said, Lord, what do you want to, want me to, 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 what do you want to say to me first? And uh, he says to me, you need to pray more. And I said, yes, Lord. And then he begins to show me the breakdown. My two sons were active here. They grew up in church. And uh, 
I showed them the way. And they decided to go their own way. And for some reason, something just switched in my mind. I'm being real. I don't know, but I'm being real because this is what happened. I would pray. I would pray for others. But it was just like going through the motions because I've I, I been praying for how many years. So I just went through the motions. And the Lord began to show me. He said, you have stepped away. And forgotten that you still need to pray because I prayed for you already. And I taught you how to pray. And I said, Lord, help me. And I fell on my face before the Lord. He loves us. He loves us. And I am encouraging us today. If your prayer is slipping, if your prayer life is slipping, you need to get in place. Because the Lord is relying on us to intercede for others. Because he said, we are not, our kingdom is not of this world. It's we are not a part of this world. We live here. But we are not of this world. And he's relying on us to be ambassadors and to stand in the gap for those who will come. Because there are many out there who still need to come. So I encourage us today as individuals and as a church that our prayer life go deeper because the Lord has called us to intercede. But it takes, it takes sacrifice, a lot of sacrifice. But if, you, if we are willing to stand in the gap. He will give us the strength through the Holy Spirit to intercede for our loved ones, for our family, for our church brothers and sisters, for sinners who doesn't know Jesus yet, although he died for them. So saints, if you haven't gone deeper yet, and if you're praying, if we're praying the same way, just because we have words in our mouth, the Lord is saying, we need to go deeper. Because when we look at this prayer, the posture of Jesus' heart was the posture of God himself. He was praying the heart of God. And the Lord is waiting on us to pray his heart. How do we know his heart? How do we know how to pray? We must know what the word of the Lord says. In order for us to know how to pray. And what to pray. And just as how Jesus was specific in his prayer. The Lord wants us to be specific when we go before him. He doesn't just want empty words or a lot of noise and a lot of words. Because that is hypocritical. That is what the Pharisees did. He wants our posture to be in the right place. And that when we go before him on matters and situations, 
we stand before him believing everything that his word says and believing that they will come to pass. So my encouragement to you today and to myself that we will go forth in prayer because the Lord's coming is closer than we can even imagine. And he's relying on us to go deeper. Much deeper in prayer. May the Lord bless you. I hope you have received something from the Lord today. Pray for me. Pray for my family. That they will surrender <laughs> to the Lord and allow him to be Lord and master over his life. It is a blessing to know Jesus. It is an awesome blessing to know the Lord. And we must, we must intercede so that others will experience what we are experiencing. To God be the glory. the Lord very timely as we always receive from Sister Shirley timely and not because it's so timely you know we don't jump all over the place we sit and we take it these are very deep words amen so we want to pray her up or strengthen the Lord that she will continue to avail herself because she's a vessel. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we give God thanks for the way how the Lord had used her. Sometimes the way the Lord used in so many ways, sometimes you don't even know the impact and what you have really done. You may have felt like, oh, I didn't do well. But it's not about not doing well. Amen. It's what the Lord have you to do. Amen. So we are blessed today immensely by the spoken word. And it is the word of God. As she opened, us, opened to us today that Jesus is our mediator between God and man. You cannot find Jesus Unless you have to go through Jesus, find the Father, you have to go through the Son to get to Daddy. Amen. So that's our broken down there. But we see also as she brings us to other passages of Scripture, in, in the same passage, St. John 17, we see that Jesus prays, pray for himself, his disciple, and the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. And we are the church. Amen. Has nothing to do with the structure, the seating, nothing at all. We are the church. Today, I am blessed. I'm encouraged. And I know it's youth Sunday. And there was something that she brought out that the youth can listen to. And understand about the mediator. Amen. So we give God thanks. At this time I want us to stand. Stand with me. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. We want to take. This message seriously today. If you listen carefully to the preacher. She's saying, pray for me and pray for my, my, my kids, my family. All of us have families that need to be prayed for. Amen. We want to pray for them. Time is getting short. We have to make our calling and election sure. Amen. 
I'm just going to invite us today to come. Brother May, please join us here, sir. And bring Brother Kevin. Brother Kevin is your day today, sir. Amen. Is there anyone else please to come? Join them at the altar. Amen. Aris, could you please remove that for me, sir? Amen. It's prayer time. We want to first pray for the youth, the children today. We're going to pray for everyone. Amen. Is there anyone else want to come and join at the altar? It's prayer time. Amen. Please make your way. Come. Let us pray together. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Amen. Spirit of Anyone else, please join us. The living God. Fall afresh. Fall afresh. On me. On me. Spirit of. Spirit of. The living God. The living God. Fall afresh. On me. On me. Break me. Break me. Hallelujah. Mm. Melt, Melt me. me. Oh, yes, Lord. More yes. me. Filled. Fill me. Oh, Spirit, Spirit of, of the living the God. One more time. Spirit of the living God. The living God. Fall afresh. Fall afresh. On to me. On me. Hallelujah. Spirit. Spirit of the, the living God. Living God. All afresh on, on me. Break me. Break me. Yes, Lord. Melt me. Oh, yes. Mold me. Fill me. Fill me. Spirit. Sometimes you have to drain the top to get something from it. Amen. Sometimes you have to keep on doing something. The excellent thing, the things that you're doing, continue to do it. Amen. Because you're going to arrive at a blessing. Amen. And, and today, oh Lord, the Lord is here and there is a blessing in store for somebody. Mighty God, Jesus, I would love the church. Just raise your hand and say, pray for me. All of you, just raise your hand, everybody. My God in heaven. Mm, I'm not the only one that need prayer. Sister Shirley is not the only one that need prayer. All of us need prayer. My God in heaven. Jesus, our Savior, Redeemer, Mediator, Advocator, huh. the God of all ages, the God that knows our sorrow, 
our pain, our discomfort. But for the better part, the God that can be touched with the feelings of infirmities. We come to you, Father. Oh, God, we cry from our heart. Mighty God, sickness and all kind of complaint that we battle with. Lord, we need you, Jesus. We, we cannot survive by ourselves. We need your touch, almighty oh, God. We need healing and transformation in our lives. Today, as we stand in prayer, such a crucial time that we are into. My God, you tell us in your word that man must pray, lifting up holy hands unto you, Lord. Father, your people, your son, your, your daughters, as they approach this altar, whatever the needs are, you are the supplier of them. I pray today, Lord, that you will touch every condition, that you will bring healing and restoration and deliverance and renewness to someone today, someone that have a condition that need God's divine intervention. It may be finance. It may be a, a, a better job. Whatever the needs are, you are our father and you are whom we look to because all the good things and, and the blessing come it from you. And today as we stand as a child of God, we are included in the blessings of God. Mm. So I pray you will shift our finances and let it be better. Shift our jobs and let it be better. Please, my God, whatever you want us to have. As the writer said, where he may lead me, I will follow. Oh Lord, I pray you will, your covering, your favor upon your people today. Oh God, even for those who are here, oh Lord, and find themselves a little weak. Strengthen the weak. My God in heaven, strengthen, Lord, the weak. Give strength, my God, to the feeble. Restore, oh God, those that seems like they are breaking apart. Bring them back to the fold in the name of Jesus. The sicknesses that plagues Dear body, I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. Touch that condition. Root it out. Dismantle it. Free your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Kevin, a young man. That you have called, my God, for a long time. You have uh, speak to him in many occasions. Lord, but today he's here. I pray that his answer will be yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your will and to your way. I will trust you. I will obey Hallelujah. Move upon him. Move within him. Give him a, a testimony. My God, that he can testify that God been good to me. Rest upon them today. Brother me, his children, rest upon them. Cover them under your blood. Cover his wife. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Build a fence around them. Mighty God, that the enemy cannot invade on them. Cover the children. 
under your blood today. Almighty God, be their guide and protector in the name of Jesus. Bless him that he will be a blessing. Oh, strengthen him that he can make the journey a success. Oh, Lord, I pray today for Casey. Lord, he had uh, allow you to use him to be a blessing to us. We understand, Lord, that today, world that we're living in, the young people are at front of the battles. But I pray for strength. I pray for courage. I pray you will undergird him. I pray you will keep him. I pray you will preserve him. I pray you will strengthen him. I pray, oh God, that he's, as he continue to sing psalms, oh God, songs of redemption, oh Lord, your spirit will, hallelujah, will touch him. That one of these days will said, I have healed. Pray for his mother, Sister Alicia. I pray you will fashion her, provide for her, lead her, direct her path. Let she be a blessing to her family continually. Strengthen her, mighty God. Whatever her needs are, you are the supplier today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, have thine own way. Oh, God, Sister Williams, Lord, I lift her up before you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you know the needs. Mighty God, whatever it is, you are God all by yourself. You are God of deliverance. You are God of the valley. You are God of the mountain. Oh, Lord, rescue your daughter. Touch her body. Breathe on her in the name of Jesus. Sister Regina, great God of glory, manifest your power. Fill her with the power. Fill her with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Cover your people. As we humble to you today, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Take your seat, please. Hallelujah. Thank you. Blessed Father, great God of glory, the, the children today, every one of them, I present them to you. Lead them. Cover them, prosper them. I command, my God, the hands of the enemy to be removed from around them. Release them today and allow them to be the blessing that you have them to be. Many, Lord, you for the home today. My God, there's such a stubbornness and such a hard task. To get them to church. My God in heaven. Lord intervene. Speak Lord. Mighty God. Dismantle that plan. That the enemy line up. My God. For a father. A mother. Their children. My God in heaven. Let it be done. In the name of Jesus. We pray. And the church said, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you.